Good morning, everyone. Today, I thought I'd uh, broach the subject a little bit uh, regarding best practices and reserved words in particular. And that also goes along the lines of dealing with special characters. In a previous video, I mentioned uh, that some of the templates that we find on Microsoft's websites, amongst others, are not designed properly and don't follow best practices and use as I demonstrated, reserved words, which is a no-no. And somebody in the questions, comments, asked me why, why that was. And this is sort of where this video came from today. Um, so let's dive in. So let's start off this discussion by looking at a few uh, web pages on the matter. I'll include the links down below in the description of this video, so don't worry about that. And we'll start off on my website. Um, I have a page regarding best practices, and you're going to see in it that I talk about um, when you're creating uh, tables, forms, things like that. I mention several times, never use reserved words. Never use reserved words. And it's you're going to see it everywhere. Same thing even in VBA, never use reserved words. And, of course, there's always in tables and all of these other variables you don't want to either be using special characters. And the reason why is it complexifies your life when you're writing SQL statements, when you're writing VBA code. It's just an added hurdle that you can avoid completely just by avoiding the use of uh, special characters. The reserved words can be even more problematic because they represent existing things, and I use the word things because it can be a variety of things, uh, methods, properties. So they already have an existence. And if you go and use that same name, you can end up with some really weird behaviors. I've experienced it myself when I had some databases and functions just weren't working properly because the names that had been given to fields were conflicting in VBA. So you can like I say, get weird behaviors, but you can avoid that entirely by simply not using those reserved words. So let's just quickly look at my article on stop using special characters. It's very simple and all I really want to point out here because we all understand what special characters are, but I have a list here of what I'm talking about and the most important one, yes, a space is a special character. Don't use it. So in your field names, do not include spaces. It's just going to make your life more problematic than it needs to be when you're developing your database. Um, and like I say here, my recommendation is simply use standard A to Z, whether it be lower or uppercase. And this is where a lot of times using something like camel case, where you can combine words and you make each word have a capital on the first letter of the word. That way it makes it easy to read and you're quickly able to differentiate your variables and things like that, or field names, or even uh, object names in your database. So that's, that's the extent of special characters. Keep it simple. Use the standard A to Z uh, alphabet. Camel case will facilitate reading, but, you know, just plain common sense, stay away from any special characters, whatever they may be, especially the space. I'll show you a demonstration in a second just to illustrate the point, but that's what we're talking about. And then we get into the reserved words. And I'm going to start off, actually, let's move this around, with the Bible on the matter, which is a web page that um, an old Access MVP uh, Alan Brown had created. This is actually where I learned about the, the term and what it is many years ago. Um, and as you can see, he's created a library here uh, that you can go by letter. And this is the full listing of reserved words. And if I just take the example that I had in the previous video, which was the word description, if we simply scroll down, and we'll eventually get there, as you can see, there are a lot of uh, reserved words, but so description is right here. And as you can see, it's a table property. It's a field property. So by using description, you can cause issues when you need to then pull out the description at a later point in time in VBA and whatnot. So it's just best never to use the word description. So if I'm in my table, 
well, then let's do something like, I don't know, contact description, job description. Just make it more explicit than just the word description. So you can concatenate, like I said, using camel case. And instead of using description, you do, like I say, job, capital J, job, and then description with capital D. And then it's very evident what you're describing and you're no longer conflicting with the reserved word. So, like I said, Alan Brown's webpage truly was the heart of the matter. There's no denying that. That's where I learned everything from. And I wanted to take it a little further um, on two aspects. First of all, my first idea was, okay, he wrote this many years ago. Uh, things have changed, new releases. Do we have any new reserved words? So I set out to try to compile a new list um, using his as the base. And uh, at the end of the day, I found some new ones, yes, but, you know, 98% were still in, uh, the same uh, as the ones that uh, Alan had uh, put in his web page. So I really didn't move things forward on that front very much. A few new ones, but nothing uh, tremendous. But what I did do is I created utility. This guy here, the reserved word checker that you can run on any database and it will flag all the issues. It goes through your queries, your tables, your forms, your reports, and it looks for those reserved words and it just highlights them to you. So then you can, you know, knowingly make a decision if you want to keep them or if you want to take the time to find and replace them. Um, and that's the utility I'm going to show you very briefly today. And uh, just like I say, it's just utility there to help you as a developer because it's not always obvious all these reserved words. When we look at them, you, you're creating your database and you're just like, did I use a reserved word? I, I'm not even aware of it. And that happens even to me. And by having a simple utility that I can drop into place and run, it facilitates my life greatly. So if you download it off that page, you get this guy here. And we're going to come back to the results in two seconds. But I want to first look at that whole thing about not using special characters. And I have a bogus table here. And you're going to see I created here a field with spaces in it. So special characters. Okay. So I just wanted to demonstrate why this is a pain in the bum. And quite simply, let's try creating a query with table one. And let's just, for right now, the first example, let's look at, we just want to pull out the name. Okay, right now we're ignoring the fact that name is a reserved word. We're just concentrating right now on special characters. We're coming back to reserved words in a minute. But if we were to look at this query right now with a single field from a table with no spaces in it, if we switch to SQL view, you'll see that it's pretty straightforward and we can simplify this if we really wanted to down to just that. And as you can see, it's simple, easy to write, no problems. And if you were to do the same in VBA to open a record set, this is what we'd need to do. So it's as simple as can be. But now let's switch back into design view. And now let's say we want to use the one with special characters. So we've got spaces. Now look at what's changed. And we're going to, like I say, simplify it as much as we can right now, just for illustrative purposes. But look at what has to happen to fields with special names. You now have to encompass them in square brackets. So now, and the same is true in VBA. So now, wherever you're going to need to put that field, now you've got to always include square brackets. And the same is true if my table name had a space in it. If it wasn't table one, it was table space one. Well, then now I have to, every single time, remember to put my brackets around it. And that's where the complexity comes. Because like I say, if I'm writing in VBA, Okay, and we're wanting to create our SQL as a string. Well, now I can't just do SSQL equals, and I can't do name with space uh, from table one. Be good if I just, and we do here select. That won't work. So now I have to remember every single time, wait a second, I have to add my square brackets. And that's where it just becomes more tedious. 
and it's easy to forget to put your square brackets and then you run in you're getting these errors and you're going back and forth but I wrote it right and you're just not seeing the fact that you need square brackets so it just makes things that much harder the same thing is if we get um, a record set okay we'd cur we'd usually have the current open record set and we'll do our ssql okay we'll dim rs as dao record set okay and then we come here and we do with rs now i'm going to keep it simple you know normally we check a record set we're going to have a loop and all that but let's just say we're, we're already in all of that well you could simply do normally the name of the field so i could do if i wanted name that will work but once again, if I try to do this, it won't work. Okay, the so name equals Daniel. Well, that will not work in the case of spaces. So now once again, I have to remember, I have to put my brackets. So you just see, it's just these extra characters, extra typing potential for a pitfall for falling into the case of forgetting them and then getting errors and troubleshooting and figuring out what you forgot. Just avoiding the spaces, you avoid the problem. So if you if I had just done that, then we don't have the issue at all. Hey, okay? camel case it. Same thing here. If I had just done without any spaces, and any of those work and it's simpler it's more compact and we don't have to worry about potentially having problems so that's the extent of the conversation on special characters the why it just simplifies life greatly is it a deal breaker of course not as you can see you can still work with fields with special characters you put brackets it's more more work more labor intensive and there's just no reason to do it that's why we tell you don't use special characters Next is the reserved words. Like I say, this is a little trickier because you cannot use reserved words and you'll never have a problem. And like I said also, I've had cases where I've worked with reserved words and I've had mysterious, odd behaviors, not getting the right results. And I couldn't figure it out why until I checked reserved words and then, I, oh, it's a reserved word. I wasn't aware of it. Changed the name in my table and instantaneously my code was working perfectly. So lesson learned was don't use any reserved words and validate that I'm not using any reserved words. And that's where this tool came from. Now, what it is in reality, and if I'll show you the form in two seconds, but basically I have one table where I imported all my reserved words. So I took Alan Brown's uh, webpage, his full list, and then I uh, put new ones that I managed to find. And then I have a table here that when we run, we're going to delete everything now. But when we run it, it gets populated with any problems it finds, so any reserved word conflicts that it finds. And that's where I have this table. I have the reserved word checker, and I also have the info, uh, which is the initial form that loads before going to the checker. Um, then I created some bogus forms and bogus reports, some bogus tables, just to be able to give you a tool that you can run even there, and it will just show you the type of thing that it does. So let's just open it normally because it really is self-explanatory. The forms tell you exactly everything you need to know. So I'm just going to compact it and reopen it. That's fine. And it tells you right here on the first page what it's doing. Okay. It's going to look for reserve words. It's going to look for special characters and their names, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The installation, I even tell you how to install it. You copy these objects, put it in your database. And then you simply run the form DB reserve word checker. And then here I just tell you where I managed to find my list of all the reserved words. And as you can see, the very first place was Alan's web page. When I close it, it automatically is going to open the next form, which is the reserve word checker. And all I have to do is press run analysis and it's going to flash back and forth and it's going to do what it has to do to check the forms or reports, the tables. And there is the result instantaneously. So you can see here, it comes here and it's telling you uh, form name has special character. It has a at symbol, at symbol. 
uh, reserved word violation. Left is a reserved word. Top is a reserved word in a macro. Uh, as you can see here, object names in a query that I created, it's I, I use a, a, a name of a field that is a reserved word. Uh, table one, the name, field name is reserved, name. So as I say, it's just a simple utility. It's just going to go through your database objects and it's going to do its best to identify and flag any issues. Then to take it a little further, should you want, because as you work in a database, it's not always convenient to be going back and forth to the form or the table. Um, I also gave the ability to export it to Excel. And now you can have the list independent from your database. So now when you want to go into your database, you can just say, okay, I want to look at form. Okay. And it has a, um, it has a, a name conflict. So the form name itself. So I can come here. There it is. That, that name is wrong. So I should rename it more appropriately and remove the special character. Okay, and then you just go to the next item. So once again, form one, well, we've renamed it without the symbol, but control name, reserved word. So I have a control in form one that has the name command. Command is a reserved word, so I should change that. So it's a command for what? It could, whatever you want, open form. Like, I don't know, I'd need to look at the code behind it to give it a more appropriate name. And then once you've done that, that's solved. And so on and so forth. You just go through the list, addressing each one of these issues one by one by one. And that is the extent of working with reserved words and special characters in a database. Why we want to avoid them at all cost and uh, simplify our lives as developers. And stabilize uh, as much as possible the performance of our database, avoiding errors and potential pitfalls. Because don't forget, just because while during development, a reserved word doesn't bite you in the butt, it doesn't mean that it won't cause you a problem at a later date. You just never know. So this is why I, I say don't use special characters. Don't really use reserved words. It's as simple as that. Um, the tool. I hope some of you find it useful. I've already had a lot of positive feedback on it, actually. Um, so that's why I'm putting it out there again in this video, because I think it can help a lot of people. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it's informative. If you're willing, please subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. If you're able to promote it in any way, it'd be greatly appreciated. And take care, guys, and, uh, and have a great day.